So I read Mueller's indictment and I said to Jen this morning, the Mueller indictment read to me very much like a very, very uh, good nonfiction book missing all of its footnotes and notations. You know, when you read a book like a nonfiction book and they make claims or cite facts or whatever, and at the bottom of the page, they'll have a footnote. Um, and then in the back of the book, they'll have more information that support those claims. I read the indictment. I'm going to tell you what I think. Some of you might like it. Some of you might not like it, but I'm just going to be honest what I think. First of all, I'm not a technical cybersecurity expert. I put that out as a full disclaimer. Over the last two years, I've read some pieces about malware and, you know, technical stuff about hacking. I'm not going to pretend to you that I quite understand it because I don't. It's not my expertise. And I choose not to focus on the Russia hack story that much because I want to cover real things that affect real people. Sorry, the people in Flint and East Chicago and Alabama and St. Louis and the people we'll meet on this gun tour. First thing they wake up in the morning thinking about isn't Russia, sorry, or Hillary Clinton. So I read it. It read to me like a very, very plausible, um, possible, and honestly, likely, likely, likely course of events. It seemed very specific to me. Uh, it seemed, I mean, if you're calling out all these Russian agents, all 12 of them, you would think you have actual proof. Uh, it, it talked about specific locations where things came from, all these things. So in my head, I'm thinking, all right, well, this went to a grand jury and they chose to indict. So I'm assuming that Mueller, who didn't provide any evidence, not one ounce of evidence to support the claims that were made in the indictment. It's just stated as fact, but there's no like evidence, like forensic evidence or anything to actually prove it. I'm, assume, I'm assuming he provided those things to the grand jury. That's all I could do, assume it. I don't have the evidence in front of me. You don't have the evidence in front of you. The grand jury, we presume, had the evidence in front of them because there's a lot. I mean, it's 29 pages and it's very heavy on specific claims and accusations that are made. So all I can do is say, I mean, it's possible. I, 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 Mueller has lied about other things. <laughs> if, you, you know, he's lied in front of Congress before about weapons of mass destruction. But at least for this indictment, it's possible to me, it, it comes off as possible and likely that everything in there happened, including uh, the GRU, which is, uh, you know, kind of less, in part the cybersecurity wing of Russia's uh, government, hacked the DNC, hacked Podesta's emails. But the bottom line is, I don't know. There's no proof provided. I don't know. I said on Twitter, all I know is there's a lot of claims made in the indictments. There's a lot of accusations, but unlike the corporate media stenographers, they're not journalists, they're stenographers. I'm not going to just regurgitate it because as a journalist, if you're an actual journalist and Jen could tell you, I'm kind of, um, I'm very scrupulous and I'm very, very emphatic about confirming things. Very, very, I, I've told her and made her double and triple check things because when you're making accusations, especially ones that have potential criminal consequences for organizations, people, um, countries, you want to check it, double check it, triple check it, and you want to make sure you have the evidence. Even if it's video evidence, audio evidence, documentation to support it, um, various eyewitnesses, and that unfortunately most journalists don't do because that would require work.
that would require require effort. So most corporate journalists are just kind of, they're just echo chamber people. Uh, Aaron Maté, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Aaron Maté with The Real News. I, I, I like his work. I watched him interview, um, I watched him interview Michael Isakoff of Yahoo News. And Isakoff's a good reporter. He's broken a lot of things. Um, I don't know him. I think he's a good reporter. But Aaron Maté interviewed uh, Michael Isakoff on Real News. You could go check it out on Real News. And literally, Maté kept saying what I'm saying and kept asking Isakoff, but like, how do you know the indictment doesn't provide any proof? Like, how do you know these claims? He's asking Isakoff, how do you know that everything he's saying is true? Or maybe some of it's true, but some of it is wrong. Or some of it's true, but some of it's missing context. How do you know? And Isakoff basically said, well, you know, prosecutors don't generally reveal their evidence in indictments. And, you know, well, a lot of things are classified. Well, no, I don't know. No, I don't know. You're asking, okay, so people on Twitter who are accusing me of what about ism and all this stuff, you're asking people, journalists, real journalists, who have lived through the lies that led to Iraq war, that have lived through, lived through the lies that led to Libya, that have lived through, honestly, lies that are keeping us in Afghanistan, that have lived through lies from the government about how many people we killed from drones, I mean, the list goes on about lies from the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, Homeland Security. You know, we, we li the government lies as, as, as much as they breathe. It doesn't mean everything the government says is a lie, but it does mean don't automatically believe what they say. And by the way, Robert Mueller is not like some separate thing from the government. He was the FBI director. And if you want to look at American history, he lied in front of Congress. Google, Robert Mueller, lies to Congress, WMDs. So Aaron from The Real News, who I just found out lives in New York, so I messaged him to get together. Aaron asked Michael Isakoff, well, the indictment, basically everything I'm saying, the indictment is very thorough. Uh, the indictment is very thorough and makes all these accusations, but it doesn't provide any proof. And Isakoff says, well, you know, Essentially trying to make it seem like Aaron and people like Aaron, I guess me too, are just like a bunch of conspiracy theories. Like, well, if you want to believe in like an alternative theory, present it. But I think, Michael Isakoff was saying, I think that when you look through the indictment, it's very overwhelming and specific. And he goes into great detail. No, no, it's, it's, I, I'm saying it's a conspiracy theory if it's not if there's no evidence to provide it. I'm saying that my Aaron Maté and myself and Glenn Greenwald and Michael Tracy, I mean, I think I don't agree 100% with everything Glenn says or Michael says, but what I do think is journalists should be saying, uh, I mean, the claims are credible. It's plausible. I don't put anything past Russia. Don't get me wrong. Russia is not a friend to the United States. Vladimir Putin is not a friend to humanity. He has commissioned the murder of uh, um, journalists. He has uh, commissioned homosexuals to be beaten up and treated without dignity. He's a, he is an autocrat. There's no mistaking. Vladimir Putin isn't a friend. I'm not defending Vladimir Putin. Trust me. But I read the indictment and it honestly reads like a book, a nonfiction book with no cliff notes. I mean, are, am I supposed to just read it without any evidence, without any supporting proof, without any forensic science, without any of it, just claims as fact and say, well, bottom line, my thoughts on, on, on the Mueller indictment are, are, goes as this. Uh, don't tell me what happened. Show me what happened. I have absolutely Absolutely. No dog in this fight. I don't care. I really, I, it doesn't, there's no benefit to me to say Russia didn't hack Hillary Clinton's campaign. If Russia hacked Hillary's campaign, so be it. 
I don't like Hillary Clinton. I don't like what she stands for. Generally speaking, do I support foreign governments hacking political campaigns emails? No, even if it's Hillary Clinton, I don't think that's a good thing. But do I think it's Pearl Harbor? Do I think Hillary Clinton's campaign? And I mean, folks, it's literally John Podesta uh, opening a phishing email. It's John Podesta opening a phishing email. Come on. It's not an attack on America. John Podesta is not America. Hillary Clinton is not America. Sorry. Uh, so as I said on Twitter, uh, some people might not like me. Some people might think that I'm, you know, a Putin puppet, whatever. I, can, I am, the problem is, so the, re, the chances of these 12 Russians who were indicted of ever stepping foot into an American courtroom are as likely as me ending up with a supermodel wife. It's not gonna happen. So are we ever gonna see the evidence or are we just gonna have to take it as, as fact? As fact that the DNC and Podesta was hacked by Russians. I trust Seymour Hirsch, who I think is one of the greatest investigative reporters of our time. He's been shunned by the, by the media because he didn't conform to be another corporate media asshole. I did a video last week. He says, not a hack. And he has sources and evidence that he's seen where it was leaked, not hacked. In fairness, I, didn't see, I haven't seen evidence from Seymour Hirsch either. So I haven't seen evidence from anyone. So as a journalist, yes, sometimes you do go on circumstantial evidence, but you're talking about going on circumstantial evidence to accuse the second biggest nuclear power in the world of espionage. I mean, that's not a small thing, folks. So, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry that nuance isn't sexy. Nuance isn't sexy in media. You're supposed to have a strong hot take and breathe fire. And breathe fire. Well, you know, I read the indictment. It seems plausible to me. It's even probably likely. But I, I can't read that indictment and say, there's the proof. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And by the way, tiny little fact that I keep, no one, no one report, no one answers this question. Mueller doesn't answer this question. If the DNC was hacked by Russia, why didn't it provide its servers to the FBI? Does that make me a conspiracy theorist for asking this? If the DNC was hacked by the Russian government, ooh, so if the DNC was hacked by the Russian government, why didn't they provide their servers to the FBI? This is kind of a common sense thing. Why would you, why would you provide your servers to a third party investigator, one that essentially, one that essentially can just tell you what you want to hear instead of the Federal Bureau of Investigations, which by the way, at the time, Democrat Barack Obama was president. Does that, it doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, unless you don't want the FBI to see your servers because you got some other shit in there. That's possible. 